Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's your coach, Carl Nicole. Hope everybody is doing wonderful today. It is Sunday, and it is Sunday morning. Let's go, right? Let's go. I'm so ready. So I just wanted to talk about something today. Um, I posted up a couple days ago um, how important it is that we self-reflect and we focus on... Um, certain things that we can improve on, certain things we can do. Hey, good morning, Megan. Certain things we can do to make sure that um, we are doing what's necessary for loving ourselves. Problem is, we don't really know what that is. <laughs> we don't know the steps to take to love ourselves. Um, and so I just wanted to give you a little bit of insight on what that is. So the first so the first self-care act that I have created, because I have one through eight, but right now I'm working on one through one through three, one through four. So the first self-love care act um, is to self-reflect. Okay, self-reflection is so vital and so important that if you don't do it, you will find yourself so, oh my God overly consumed with pleasing other people, overly consumed with um, feeling like you're not enough. It's just a lot of things if you don't take the time to self-reflect and look at some of the things that you're doing <laughs> that maybe you need to improve on. Um, here's the thing. I have told people that are people pleasers or people that tend to be around people that constantly criticize them. I told them, get rid of those, get rid of those uh, critics in your life because those critics are really causing you to be more um, cautious of, you know, not making decisions and being confident in the decisions you're making. So yes, that applies to that, but that doesn't apply to this. So I want you to think about something. When we self-reflect, sometimes, <laughs> We have been told things about ourselves by other people that we care about, we love. And we're like, I rem I'm, I'm not ready to hear this. I'm not ready to hear this. I don't want to hear what you have to say. I'm not even interested in what you're, having, what you're saying about me. So therefore, I don't want to hear it. I'm not ready to hear it. So guess what? I'm not going to hear it. Here's the thing, though. There are some truths to some people that tell you stuff that you do that you maybe are just not ready to um, admit. <laughs> so I want you to think about something because I think this is important. Sometimes there are people in your life that truly can give you an honest critique that's healthy and that's good for you so that you can use what they tell you to basically get better in your life um but we have to be mindful that some of those people that give us certain things and tell us certain things and say certain things about what we don't want to hear or aren't ready to hear a lot of times we want to shut them out but self-reflection is the time when in your private time and privately and when you're you know alone kind of take heed to what they're saying it may help you <laughs> I, I can tell you this, um, a lot of times we don't want to admit to ourselves our flaws or we don't want to admit to ourselves our um, continuous patterns that aren't healthy. We don't want to hear it, nor are we willing to hear it, right? And see, as a coach, I get it. And I have clients, some clients that don't want to hear what I have to say, and that's fine. It's, I get it. But anytime I'm coaching someone and telling them something that is hard for them to hear, well, they might listen, they might not, but that's their call. But at the end of the day, I'm not telling you something that can't help your life. <laughs> so again, this is what's imperative and important. We don't want to look at some of the things that people tell us about ourselves. And so when we don't want to look at it, don't want to hear it, we don't want to, you know, we tend to just uh get upset and in the upset nine times out of ten it's not that you're upset with what they said but you're upset because they're exposing something maybe you're not ready to face i get it 
Trust me, I get it. I used to be accused by, <laughs> by several of my friends that you are always running late. Always. When we got somewhere to be, you're never on time. You're doing this, you're doing that, and you tell me that you're going to be here and you don't show up on time. And that's very started to look at myself. I had to start looking at myself and saying, well, wait a minute. Um, I need to start being a little bit more mindful about me and punctual. And when I do this, maybe I might be more often invited or not told a different time because I'm running behind all the time because I'm not being mindful of other people's time. So in self-reflection, I had to sit down and say, well, what can you do different? What can you do different to get a better result? And I remember I started to be more punctual. And, you know, the little cracks and jokes about me being late all the time started to fade away. And at first, you know, they're like, oh, she's on time. But then, you know, after I started to be more consistent and on time more often, well, now I'm finding myself to be more um, punctual and I actually shifted and changed that pattern of behavior. It's what it is. It's patterns. It's behaviors. And so when we want certain things to be different in our life, we have to sit down and be honest with ourselves. But in that honesty of self, we also have to realize that sometimes we don't really want to hear it. We don't want to hear the truth. But if you're not loving yourself and you're not being honest with yourself, you tend to put up this different type of image in other people's minds and then it's hard hey tasha it's hard to really um learn the power of loving you also requires you to look at you <laughs> a lot of us will do stuff and we will not acknowledge we do it listen i know honey oh it's all good tasha we'll get you we'll get you together we'll get you either sometime today or we could do it monday it's no worries babe i got you um, but we'll be so apt to not wanting to hear, right? We don't want to hear what someone has to say about something that may be true about us. So I want you to think about something because I think as a coach, it's my due, it's my due diligence to tell you that sometimes we have to be willing to look at ourselves, And then if we continue to hear something, um, more than not and then we're hearing it from different people in a different way maybe but it's still the same issue that we tend to do then we need to start to think about well how can i change this pattern because obviously you're not the only one that said that someone else said that to me somebody else mentioned that oh i i guess i do do that and then we disregard it we're not loving ourselves hello <laughs> we're not loving ourselves because we're not looking at self it's easy to become. Here's the thing, babies. Easy to become judgmental. You're easy to become um, a person that keeps count of your lover's wrongs. It's easy. Come on. It's easy to do when you don't look at yourself. <laughs> when you are all about you and you don't do no wrong, that, my love, is one hell of a way to destroy any relationship. Love relationships, parenting, being an adult child to a parent, uh, co-workers. Be someone that nobody can stomach because you don't see anything wrong with anything you do. Trust me. Trust me. It, it will become an issue long term. And so it's important that I want you guys to understand why it is vital to self-reflect okay in your self-reflection take time to really look at what are some of the things that i need to work on that i can really do differently it doesn't have to be something major it could just be something small like i like me i i tended to be late a lot <laughs> lord have mercy my friends was like listen you were always late. You got us running behind. I missed Lionel Richie one time with the best friend. Oh, she was livid. I still can't live it down. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she was livid at me because I was running behind. Her. Oh, I'm sorry. I was rushing. And 
She's like, no, unacceptable. So I had to start looking at me. Now, it's something that is, you know, it's funny, but really it's something I needed to pay attention to, to make sure that, okay, I need to stop missing out on stuff because I'm not being punctual. I'm not doing what I need to do. But the only way we can shift and change things is we have to change the pattern. And in order to change the pattern, we have to be willing to open up to listen <laughs> to true to true and honest critique, to true and honest honesty from people that care. And a lot of times it's hard to do that because we don't want to admit, hey, um, perhaps maybe I should have done something a little different. You know, we can't, we can't have different results if we're not willing to pay attention to ourselves. Um, and no matter what, we have to do this to improve our love relationships, intimate relationships, friendships, um, familial relationships, parenting. If we're not self-reflecting and we only look at the other person or the other people in our lives or in that dynamic, what tends to happen is we begin to get real judgmental. Um, I think I talked about this before, but even in parenting. So just to kind of piggyback on that for a minute, when you are a parent and you only see the good in you as your parent, as your parenting versus the good in the child and all the child ever ever does is this and that and this and that and this child don't listen and this child this and this child that you need to stop stop and 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 sit down with yourself <laughs> and and self-reflect first of all you need to get back to who you were at that age and then remember some of the mistakes you made at that age how frustrated your mama and your father was with your decisions that you were making. And then what happens when we self-reflect and we go back, we're like, oh, I can't be upset with my 21-year-old daughter. When I look back and see what I was doing at 21, I can't be upset. I can learn to help guide her making better decisions than I made, but I can't be upset with her for making decisions that maybe I don't agree with. But again, when you're young, you have certain things that you just, you don't have the foresight that you do as a parent. So I always tell parents, listen, I get it. I get the kids are making bad decisions. I get they're all hormonal and everything. I get all that. But the thing is, as a parent, we have to, we have to self-reflect as a parent. We got to be like, well, what can I do different as a parent, as a mom? My kid isn't really listening, so what can I do different? How can I shift and change some things? What can I do to make this child more receptive to what I say? And maybe it's my approach. Maybe it's how I'm saying it. Maybe it's not what I say, but how I say it. Maybe I need to figure out, maybe I don't need to be um, a guide right now. Maybe I need to have someone else guide, and I just give somebody else that's more easier to listen to and tell them what I need her to know, and then have them tell her. Sometimes you gotta be creative as a parent, man. We can't do everything. So sometimes we have to have parents or people that we, we, we trust to kind of guide our kids as well, because we can't always be everywhere and we can't always do everything perfect. But again, it comes down to self-reflection. How are you as a parent? How are you as a parent? What are you doing? And are you willing to listen to listen <laughs> to what the child is having to say. It's not easy. Sometimes we're, we as parents, because we're older, we believe we just know it all and we did everything perfect when we were young. And, mm, no, we didn't. <laughs> we made some mistakes, a lot of them. And so um, I always tell my clients or even people that come and ask me questions about their scenarios, hey, look, are you self-reflecting? Are you looking at you? I know it's easy to look at your man and he don't this, he don't that, or your girl is doing this, your girl is doing that. But are you looking at you? We're taking too much time of our day looking at somebody else and not enough time with looking in self. And in that self-reflection, it's, it's called mirror work. <laughs> when you're looking at you and you are looking back at you, you're like, well, there are some ways I can approve. 
there are some things I can do different. And maybe, just maybe, I might get better results. I might get better, better partner choices. I may get better experiences intimately. I may get better relations with my child. I may get better relationships with my sister or my brother or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's vitally important that we sit down and realize that self-reflection is key to self-care and self-loving. Trust me, it is key. And there's no way around looking at you. <laughs> there's no way around it. And being a lot of people's coach, it, it, it helps me to understand that sometimes what I tell a client is hard to hear. Sometimes what I tell a client isn't well received, nor is it something they want to hear or are willing to hear. So with that said, that's very much the, the problem in most relationships. We don't want to hear when somebody gives us an honest, an honest um, opinion about something that we're doing wrong or something we're not working on properly. We don't want to hear it. <laughs> we don't want to hear it because, first of all, we don't want to admit it to ourselves. And in, in the lack of wanting to admit it, we're okay with um, the pattern of, of, of all the drama so obviously it's something in us so again I want you guys to get this this is very important sit down if you have some type of we can just say even if things are going well as a parent or well as a lover or well as a sister brother family member even if it's going well there's always room for improvement you know, we cannot get so comfortable. And I think a lot of times we get comfortable with just having um, relationships not getting so, you know, complicated. So a lot of times we're okay with the relationships being, you know, uh, you know kind of like on cruise control. There's no real back and forth. There's no real um, arguing and all of that. But here's the thing, though. Um, it comes a point when we have to sit down and be honest with self. We have to own the fact that in our own human imperfection, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to do things wrong. We're going to have patterns that maybe aren't really good. Um, and so with those patterns... Are we willing to change some things? And here's the thing. And I'm, I'm going to be done. Um, when you're set in your ways, it's hard to um, maximize change and different results. So being set in your ways is like having um, trying to move concrete. It's not going to happen. You're not going to want to change or fix or or do things different and with that this comes so much drama and headache and frustration for people that care about you and want to see you do better and have better results in your life um and so it's imperative that sometimes we sit down and we're like well wait a minute um is what they said all wrong was there some truth to it was I disregarding it because I didn't want to hear it? Or was I disregarding it because I knew it was true and I don't want to change it? <laughs> this is some real stuff, honey. And this is how it happens. It happens a lot. That we don't want to acknowledge stuff that mm, we don't want to change yet. We kind of like our madness. <laughs> As your coach, baby, I know all, all about the madness. A lot of people don't want to give up the madness, see? And that's something, again, self-reflection will help you to come out of. It will help you to see, oh, so maybe if I change some things and I resort to allowing some things to be a more um, better usage in my life, then maybe perhaps... I will have a better result. But again, self-reflection self is important all the time. We don't want to admit that self-reflection 
um, is something we must do to make sure we have more of a solid, more fulfilling relationship with ourself. But we also, when we, when we self-reflect, we also have a better relationship with not just self, but, uh, but with other people. When you self-reflect and find certain things that you do, maybe not, we, sh we do things that are not really good for us. And we sit back and we're like, Ooh, I do do that. <laughs> maybe I should tell people that they shouldn't do it either and maybe they can help me to get better when you do stuff like this guess what happens you become a better more inviting person in people's lives people love people that love to look at themselves and take what they learn and improve and then can even be a resource to help you improve I mean these are things that people don't want to talk about because self-reflection is not sexy <laughs> nobody talks about oh I want to self-reflect tonight you know don't if you just talk about you want to get it in tonight then people are all on that but when you talk about oh, I want to self-reflect tonight and write some journaling and write some blog posts and tell some people about how it is so important to love themselves Honey, if that was the case, I would be a wealthy woman right now because I tell people all the time, you're not shining on loving oneself. You need to shine on loving yourself. Are you looking out for self? Are you taking care of you? People don't want to hear that. But it's all good. I get it. But yeah, we have to self-reflect. Self-care act. Take one. Again, your life is a movie. I say it all the time. Your life is a movie. Every morning you wake up, it's a new take. It's a new take. And we don't want to admit it, but a lot of times we are not doing what we should be doing for our own self-loving. We're not. And one of the greatest acts of self-love is to self-reflect, baby. You have to do this. And it should be a practice, a daily practice to love yourself, honey. <laughs> because you don't understand that when you're not really sitting down, and 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 loving you and making sure you have um taking an inventory on some of the things you want to do better if you're not sitting back and doing that i'm telling you now you're you're very likely going to be very judgmental you're going to become a nag in your relationship you're going to be a bitchy ass mom or dad you're going to be a horrible co-worker because you're going to be aggravated with everybody else and not yourself these are the reasons why we fall into these traps. And they really are emotional traps when we don't self-reflect. So again, I want to make sure you guys get this. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you tell your friends. I know y'all love to go to the spas, get your nails done, and get your hair done, and go shopping. Listen, I'm a girl. I'm all about that stuff too. But this morning, oh, I was self-reflecting. <laughs> If you notice on my post today, I talked to my 21-year-old self and had a ball reflecting on some of the things I did and thought and all kinds of things. These are things we have to do. And then we get our nails done, we go to the spa, we hang out with our girlfriends and go to, to the delis and stuff. Hey, that's all good. But it's not going to do you any good if you haven't self-reflected because now you're in, in this wonderful setting with your girlfriends and you just looking down your nose at everybody oh look at her she just saying she's all that oh look at her she's doing oh look at her and then they're like why is your energy so negative <laughs> you're like well, i don't think i'm negative i think i'm pretty positive if you ask me i'm pretty damn cool i mean why are you guys so judgmental of me and this is how it happens see this is how people get so ugh, they can't stomach us <laughs> Because we're not self-reflecting. <laughs> Make sure y'all share this video. Y'all need a coach. Inbox me. Listen, I, I, I'm i a tough coach. I'm going to give it to you raw. I'm a tough coach. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to tell you nothing that you don't already know or you are not willing to face. Now, I'm going to look out for you. I'm going to make you own your stuff. <laughs> I'm going to make you own your stuff. Because I make myself own my stuff. So I can do that. So again, we have to understand it's important that we're doing what we need to do as far as self-reflection and also understanding if you really want to know about the self-care acts, inbox me, say, hey, let me get those self-care acts. I need to get on the ball on this because there's there's eight of them. I haven't even posted um, five through seven yet. 
There's eight, but I just haven't posted them. Nobody's coming at me enough asking me for one through three yet. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, one through four yet. So until I get an abundance of people that really want to learn about love and self for real, instead of thinking getting your hair and your nails done and going to the spa is self-care or going and getting you new Jordans and getting your groom on, is is self-loving until y'all don't until you guys really want to learn the real deal i'm only putting up one through four but y'all gotta ask me for them <laughs> just that simple i'm not giving it away y'all gotta ask me hey i want to get those self-care acts okay you really want it it's gonna take some work and some self-reflection and that's what is imperative that we have in this lifetime we're not we're not easily stomached when we're horrible at looking at self when we're parenting horrible at looking at self when we're really doing what we need to do baby listen <laughs> i'm trying to tell you i am that chick and i'll make sure i look out for you but again it's tough it's tough it's hard but at the end of the day i only help people get results real shit i'm gonna give you results but that may vary it's based upon your dedication to you not to me to yourself you got what i'm saying all right, babes, make sure you share this video. And again, don't forget, self-care act. Take one is self-reflection. All right, guys, I'm out of here. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off.